Because you are. <laughs> oh, hi guys. Is that better? <laughs> this one. Oh, I threw a false flag up. <laughs> oh, she was in the middle of something. Ah, oh, hope y'all are doing good tonight. We're doing good. Yeah. It's uh, six twenty-three here at our house. <clears throat> Just getting around later than usual. Yeah, that's all right. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Yeah. Marsha's mom back went back to the hospital, getting her put in. So maybe tomorrow we'll go back up. See what's going on with her. We don't know. We don't know. We're gonna talk to doctors tomorrow. But we know that we can see through this stuff that's going on, on the earth, and we gotta stay focused. Uh, I know we live through the life today, but we have an expectation that most people don't have, and they don't understand that we're suffering uh, for a purpose, and that this has all been uh, ordained by God. What we're going through. Yep. So, anyway, we are My very... sisters don't understand that I have a very... Um... Marcia sees life different than they do. <laughs> uh, way, way, it's a whole, it's just a dark, light and dark. So, and that's what it is in us, is light and dark. You know, we, the light shines, we are light shines in the world, and we can see it in each other. I just know it's not that... <laughs> you know, we see it in each other. I know I'll see her again in a thousand years or so. Yep. Okay. So, anyway. She doesn't have to suffer <clears throat> if she dies. The resurrection's when we'll, we'll, we'll see her again. And we know that, but they think they die and go to heaven and then there's a resurrection. But then they're not sure. They're not sure how that goes. So. So they can't believe in a resurrection. No. Nope. So. Anyway, we have an expectation that we keep our our eyes focused, our minds focused in the celestial realm, where our, our uh, Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, is returning for his body. Yep. Looking for his advent. <laughs> so we have today Colossians 1, 21 and 22. You ready? And see what comes out of it. Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Okay. Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Blessed, chosen, cherished, valued, it, and deeply loved by the happy God. Yeah. We found a rich resource from A.E. Knox's book, His Grandest Glories, page 72 and 75. The realization of the secret of Christ varies according to the administration in which it operates. In this economy, it anticipates in spirit what will take place for uh, what will take physical form on earth in the last two eons. We have the presence of Christ in spirit and in expectation. The conciliation may be received and enjoyed by all who believe. Now I want to make mention that Alicia found this book on Clyde's site. Uh, A.E. Knox's book, The Grandest Glories. It's a study in Colossians. <laughs> so it's a neat book to go through if you all get it. The Colossians had not only been lost and were now saved, they had not only been sinners and were now justified, but they had been estranged and enemies and were now reconciled. We can see the close relationship of the secret of the evangel to that of Christ. Both go deeper than sin and deal with offense. That was something I didn't understand. Sin and offense are two different things. Sin is... is uh, Missing the mark. Is, yeah. Both go deeper than sin and deal with the offense. Uh, they go beyond beneath the outward act, sin, to the inward motive, which is offense. They deal not merely with failure, but with enmity. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Even one whose outlawed behavior and treatment of his fellows is beyond report, repro reproach may be a better enemy of God in his heart. Indeed, it is quite possible to be charitable and philanthropic, um, meaning generous, with a maid, with a maid, with a mind that defies and decrees the deity. Yeah, the attitude of the heart. 
is far more vital than external conduct in our relationship to God, especially with reference to ultimate reconciliation. That is why the Colossians were first characterized as estranged and enemies in their comprehension. Think, thinking proceeds and prepares for conduct, and our thoughts concerning God may be corrected before our walk can become, be brought into harmony with him. Wicked acts arise from this spiritual friction with God, just as sinful deeds do from the lack of vital connection with him. I do not have the impression, this is A. Knox says, I do not have the impression that the Colossians were especially wicked in the usual sense of that word, as, for instance, the Corinthians, but that their state was rather that of the average one who is reconciled to God. Justification is by the blood of Christ, yet reconciliation is through the death of Christ. Romans 5, 9 through 10. The first has to do with acts and calls for suffering. The second has to do with condition and demands death. We deserve both. Christ endured both on our behalf. Now, we, like the Corinthians, have been reconciled to God, and it reverses our relationship to him to man and to our acts. We were unholy, not fit to come near God's dwelling place, shut out from his presence and blessing. Now we are holy, fit to approach his presence, and loaded with spiritual blessings. <laughs> we were full of That's flaws, good. sinful, <laughs> lacking in everything, but now we are unimpeachable in yeah. his sight. All of this is implied and included in our reconciliation all of this is necessary to perfect peace found only through Christ. Yeah. Our reference today is Colossians 1, 21 to 22. The Debar has this, and it reads, And you, having been once, having once been estranged and enemies in through thinking and the evil works, but now he down changed in the body of his flesh through his death, in order to give you standby as holy and undefiled and unindictable in his down eyeing. We use a concordant literal for these studies and references. Let us open the treasures we find in Paul's evangel and see what comes to us through them. These treasures we dig out of this. <coughs> and the concordant version for Colossians 1, 21, 22 says, And you, being once estranged and enemies, in comprehension by wicked acts, yet now he, Christ, reconciles by his body of flesh through his death to present you holy and flawless and unimpeachable in his sight. Romans 5, 6 through 10. For Christ, while we are still infirmed, still in accord with the era, for the sake of the irreverent, died. For hardly for the sake of the just man will anyone be dying. For, for the sake of a good man, perhaps someone may be, even be daring to die, yet God is commending his love. Yet God. <laughs> yet, yet God is commending this love of his <laughs> to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Yeah. Mm, much rather than being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from indignation through him. For if, being enemies... We were conciliated to God through his, the death of his son. Much rather, being conciliated, we shall be saved in his life. <laughs> That's awesome. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Excuse me again. For those who are in accord with flesh are disposed to that which is of the flesh. Yet those who are... Oh, excuse me again. In accord with spirit to that which is of the spirit. For the disposition of the flesh is death, yet the disposition of the spirit is life and peace. It's because the disposition of the flesh is an enmity to God. For it is not subject to the law of God, for neither is it able. Now, those who are in flesh are not able to please God. 1 Corinthians 6 9 through 11. Or are you not aware that the unjust shall be enjoying the allotment shall of... Not. Huh, shall, shall not. Shall not. Yeah. 
the unjust shall not be enjoying the allotment of God's kingdom. Be not deceived, neither paramours, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor catamites, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, revilers, no extortioners shall be enjoying the allotment of God's kingdom. And some of you are these, but, but you are bathed off, but you are hallowed, but you were justified in the name of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Ephesians 2, <laughs> yeah. 1 through 5. And you, being dead to your offenses and sins, in which you once walked in accord with the eon of this world, in accord with the chief of the jurisdiction of the air, the spirit now operating in the sons of stubbornness, among whom we also all behaved ourselves, once in the lust of our flesh, doing the will of the flesh and of the comprehension, and were in our nature children of indignation, even as the rest. Yet God, <laughs> yet God, <laughs> being rich in mercy because of his vast love for with which he loves us, we also being dead to the offenses and the lust, vivifies us together in Christ, in grace you are saved. Yeah. Wow. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13. Wherefore remember that once you, the nations in flesh, who are termed uncircumcision by those termed circumcision in flesh made by hands, that you were in that era apart from Christ, being alienated from the citizenship of Israel, and guess promise of covenants, having no expectation and without God in the world. Yet now in Christ Jesus, you who once are far off are become near by the blood of Christ. Ephesians two nineteen through 22. <laughs> the cross, done it all. Consequently then, no longer are you guests, sojourner, and sojourners, but are fellow citizens of the saints and belong to God's family being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, the capstone of the corner, being Christ Jesus himself. In whom the entire building, being connected together, is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for God's dwelling place in spirit. Ephesians four seventeen through 19 <laughs> This then I am saying and attesting in the Lord, by no means are you you still to be walking according as those of the nations also are walking in the vanity of their mind, their comprehension being darkened, being estranged from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. And because of the callousness of their hearts, who being past feeling in greed, give themselves up with wantonness to all uncleanness as a vocation. Titus 3, 3-7. For... We also were once foolish, stubborn, deceived, slaves of various desires and gratifications, leading a life in malice and envy, detestable, hating one another. Hmm. Yet, when the kindness and fondness for humanity of our Savior, God, made its advent, not for works which are wrought in righteousness, which we do, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Through the bath of renaissance, and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Which he pours out on wow. us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified in the one's grace, we may be becoming enjoyers in expectation of the allotment of life eoni. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians two, fourteen to sixteen. For he is our peace, who makes both one, and rises the central wall of the barrier, the enmity in his flesh nullifying the law of precepts and decrees, that he should be creating the two in himself into one new humanity, making peace, and should be reconciling both in one body to God through the cross, killing the enmity in it. Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blesses us with every spiritual blessing among the celestials in Christ according as he chooses us in him before the disruption of the world, we to be holy and flawless in his sight. In love, designating us beforehand for the place of the Son, for him, through Christ Jesus, that's in accord with the delight of his will, for the law to the glory of his grace, which graces us in the beloved. 
Ephesians mm -hmm. five twenty seven, that he should be presenting to himself a glorious ecclesia, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that it may be holy and flawless. Yeah. First Thessalonians four seven, for God calls us not for uncleanness, but in holiness. Titus two. 11 through 14 for the saving grace of God made its advent to all humanity training us that disowning irreverence and worldly desires we should be living in living sanely and justly and devoutly in the current eon anticipating that happy expectation even the advent of the glory of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gives himself for us that he should be redeeming us from all lawlessness and be cleansing for himself a people to be about him, zealous for ideal acts. Second Corinthians five eighteen through twenty one. Yet all is of God, who conciliates us to himself through Christ, and is giving us the dispensation of the conciliation. How that God was in Christ conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and placing in us the word. Of the conciliation for Christ then are we ambassadors as of God entreating through us we are beseeching for Christ's sake be conciliated to God for the one not knowing sin he makes be makes to be a sin uh, offering for our sakes that we may be becoming God's righteousness in him we love you all grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ Wow that's our study for Colossians 1, 21 to 22. Ah, thanks to Judy and Alicia and Sterling yep. and Marcia for helping us get this together. Uh, okay. We enjoy it. I just read. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice having you with me. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, love you guys. Appreciate you hanging out with us. And uh, nothing like just letting the scripture speak for itself. Yep. See what treasures is in a verse or two. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all tomorrow. God willing. Okay. Now see scratch you. my back. Okay. We'll get some back scratching going on. See y'all later.